<laughs> but they don't scare me. They're just a tool of divination. Keith will have a different take on it. He'll say, avoid them, whatever you do, because they're dangerous. I've had known people to get into trouble with Ouija boards because they start asking the questions, then rely on the Ouija boards, and then they have all kinds of trouble afterwards because then they, the spirit is easier to bring in than to get rid of. So you don't know what you're getting. Yeah. Yeah, it can be, but they just they just don't scare me very much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have one because the client gave it to us. Like, here, I don't want it anymore. It's moving on its own. <laughs> so we have that. No, it's moving on. You haven't disposed of it yet? Oh, you're yeah. adding it to your museum. Oh, you didn't hear what I said, did you? <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, now, my brother Keith won't. You know, Stephanie asked what our take is on Ouija boards. Yeah. He's a little more adamant about them. Um, I don't think you're really scared of them. They just, you know, they're No, cool. I just, it's a speculation that, uh, yeah. you know, somebody's using their own body as the medium, as the vehicle. And uh, you're actually asking something to manipulate your motor control. Anyway. Yeah. Keith Johnson, who is also a demonologist, <laughs> what is your opinion of my conducting a seance here in the Sylvanus Brown House on July 1st? Yeah, give me. Uh, well, we, uh, we have it. Yeah, Keith's more cautionary about that. I, I get more experimental. I want to. I, I believe the spirit's there. I don't need to be convinced. I just want to bring her out more. Yeah. Incidentally, anybody getting rid of a Ouija board, they should not burn it. That might invite a retaliation. The only time that should happen is if it's under control conditions yeah. with church authorities. Um, sometimes you have it blessed and simply bury it or have someone do it for you. What about tarot yeah. cards? Tarot cards, well, I think mostly, even with the Ouija board, especially with tarot cards, it's actually your subconscious giving you the answer. You're figuring it out yourself. But once in a while, it's somebody very sensitive who tends to attract them and gets an attachment. Uh, tarot cards, very unlikely, but it is slightly possible they could have an attachment to them. Depends who's used them and for what. Yeah, in other words, they're resident spirits. I know my friend John Zappas, before he started putting everything into his haunted museum, he used to dispose of haunted I items near his house, throw them over a bridge into a brook. To rushing water. Now it's driving a blessed brook. Yeah, <laughs> probably is. I remember one time he told us that he was throwing a uh, doll that had an attachment to it. He's throwing a baby doll that had an attachment into the river. All of a sudden he looks around and he's surrounded by the local police. Police cars are surrounding him. They get out and they say, Oh, it's just you, John. Some lady called us, told us some crazy old man's throwing a baby into the river. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that ain't a baby. That's just my doll. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Johnny's that. All right. Uh, oh, I, I don't even want to leave tonight. I, really don't. I want to go back in the brown house. <laughs> but again, well, I just think they're overnight. Thanks, Liam. Hey, thanks for sharing your account there. That's an interesting story. That's an attachment, also called a hitchhiker. Brian Hanwash had plenty of those. But when we were at the Johnstone Public House, Brian brought the dress of. Didn't he bring the dress in a newspaper? The girl who was killed in yeah, the railroad Yeah, yeah. Well, he was he was uh, living in an apartment, third floor, in one socket. And he was having terrible ghost activity, it seemed to be a little girl. When he brought the dress home from Stone's Public House, the activity stopped, almost like the girl was happy to have a little dress or a playmate, whatever. As soon as he brought the dress back, the activity started up again full force, like she was mad. One time he turned over in bed, and there's a little girl with long, black, wet hair looking right at him. So no. he had to, that was he a real had to rush around. But he took there. chances by bringing things back. That's one of the stories in paranormal reality stories. Yeah. Have you guys been to the Yeah, I've yes, been a couple have, of times. Yeah. I got feelings there, didn't get any direct activity. But, yeah, I, I laid down the place where Abby Borden was murdered yeah. in, that, in that spot. And it's I like, did that. Uh, it's like chill water rushing over me. But it was very subjective. I didn't hear or see anything out of the ordinary. Other people have, and other people have seen furniture. Uh, somebody, uh, crew from Spooky South Post, uh, Tim Weisberg, Matt Moniz, they were taking pictures. They took a picture of me laying on the sofa where and Andrew Borden was killed. Space, yeah. And, uh, my wife Sandra's moving the hatchet. When the picture came out, the blade of the hatchet didn't come out for some reason. It was Wasn't digital it? and the, it just was uh, vacant. That was blocked out. I no, yeah, well, yeah well, I mean, it just wasn't there. It was like yeah, it wasn't there. But they, you know, so you wouldn't uh, say. Oh, when I saw that picture, I thought, oh, Sandra couldn't get a real hatchet or something. But you know, no, it just, <laughs> it just no, didn't come out. Yeah, no, head on it, but. Uh, Made me a little nervous. How fast was she moving that hatchet? If it was <laughs> the picture, you know, <laughs> but she yeah. stopped herself in time. Yeah. But I've heard that voice in the brown house so much that I know it now. What Cher got on a recorder last uh, Friday of last week? I was just closing up, and I said, well, "I'm going to go downstairs now." And and you <laughs> that little voice and you know. 
but uh, I'm trying to compile recordings from here and photographs and doing a serious study of the hauntings of Slater Mill site. So That's another chapter in, uh, yeah. in book two. The way I see it, now. I've made 34 new friends tonight, so I want you all to keep in touch. Again, right, I, in Paranormal Realities too, there is a chapter about the hauntings of Slater Mill. Yeah, Keith has detail. written uh, three books, he's publishing his third book, Paranormal Realities 1, 2, and 3. Unless you thought of a different title for a paranormal reality. Not three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I could try to remember all your names. I remember yours. But, uh, but yeah, keep in touch. And again, Carcosin mm -hmm. at live.com or through Slater Mill or Beyond the Veil Paranormal Research. It's www.beyondtheveilparanormal.org or through NEAR. Yeah. Nearparanormal.com. Near pa Nearparanormal.com. If you look for me, you'll get in touch. But just write to the haunted, they'll give you my address. Mm -hmm. But thank you very much. and uh, Give you. everyone a big round yeah, of Yeah, thanks so much. Oh. You're all great. You're all wonderful. You let me, I'll keep you talking. Nobody